In this video, we will cover how to integrate open source model with Spring AI. Our focus is mainly going to be newly launched Llama 3.1 model. So we'll see how to integrate it. We will test few of its capabilities. So we are going to access this Llama 3.1 using Olama. So first thing what we need to do is come to this website olama.com and then download Olama. So you can click on download and then you will see, okay, there are three options. So based on your operating system, you can just click on this and download on your system. System. Once the Olama gets installed on your system, you are going to get this kind of icon. It will just tell you, okay, the Olama has been installed and running in your system. So once the Olama gets installed, there are a few things that I just wanted to highlight. So we have to go to this GitHub and here you can see the models library. All these models comes into different variants. So you are going to have a 8B parameter model, 70B parameter model, and there is going to be respective size of all this model. So what you need to do, like before running all this model, you just have to make sure what model you can download on your system and what you can run it. So that's it. This kind of configuration comes into a picture. So you can see like you should have at least 8 GB of RAM available to run the 7B models, 16 GB to run the 13B models and 32 GB to run the 33B models. So if you have around 16 GB of RAM in your system, then max you can go with the 13B models and you cannot run like any other model beyond this. Other thing what I wanted to highlight, they do have this models sections over here. So you can just click on this models and you will get a full list of the models supported by Olama. So here you can see all the models and each and every model is going to have their supported capability as well. In this case, you can see like Llama 3.1 is the most advanced open source model. So it comes with the different sizes and it also supports the tools capability. But if you see the, the Gamma 2 model, it comes with the two variants and it doesn't have this tools capability. Here you can just scroll it and just see what models you want to utilize. If you are interested in some specific model here, we wanted to integrate it with Llama 3.1. So I can just click on Llama 3.1. Here you can see the different variants of the model and their respective sizes. And here you can also see the command which we have to run to install a specific model. So if I have to run like 8B model on my system, then I just have to run this command. If I have to run the 7TB model, then I have to run this command. We have to pick and choose based on the capacity of our machine. And if you just scroll it a bit, then you will find some details about all these models. So this upgraded version of Llama 8 b and 70 b models you can see like they comes with a very higher longer context length which is going to be 128k so it means we can pass a lot of input data and then you can also see like it comes with the stronger reasoning capabilities and you can use it for long form text summarization multilingual conversations agents coding assistance and then if you scroll it a bit then you will find the benchmarking of all these models against the other models what we have in the market so with this in mind, so now actually we are going to go ahead and install this 8B model. So you can see like this 8B model is the latest one. So you can either run this command or you can just select the latest or you can run this command. Both would work. I'm just going to open my command prompt. And this command you have to run like once Olama is installed on your system. And after that, I am just going to run this command. And based on the model size, it's probably going to take some time to install it. In my system, it's already installed because it's already installed. So it has just directly given me a prompt. So I can just try to see whether this particular model is functional or not by passing just random instructions. So here I, I can ask like, please write a story in 50 words. And you can see like it has started writing the story in 50 words. So now I know like this model has been installed and it is working correctly on my system. So I can now just go ahead and try to integrate it with Spring AI. Also one more thing what you can notice over here when you're downloading all these models and trying to interact with it, then it's going to perform a bit slower. And that is something that we have to keep in mind. And it also depends on your system capability. So I can just go ahead and try to integrate it with Spring AI. So the first thing what we have to do is go to start.spring.io and from the dependencies perspective, now we have to look for Olama. This would give us the capability to interact with Olama models. And on top of that, we have to have the Spring Web so that we can create our endpoint and interact with these models. You can just generate the code and you can just import it on your IntelliJ. So once you import it, the first thing what we have to do is go to our application.properties file. First of all, 
we have to pass this Spring AI Olama base URL because all these models are running on our local machine. So the URL is going to be this only localhost 11434. After that, you have to mention the models and that model we can pass it using Spring AI Olama chat options model. And because we are using the latest, so I can pass the latest like this. And then there are a few additional parameters which I'm passing, which is a temperature. So you can just play around with this. What kind of randomness you want in your output, you can control it using temperature. And because we want a response to be generated in the JSON format, so we have to pass this particular instruction. And you can see like this particular instruction is a bit different with the OpenAI. There actually we are passing the JSON object. But here, if you want the output to be generated in the JSON format via Olama, then we have to pass an instruction like this. Just for the reference, we can go to Spring AI and here you can just go for chat model and the chat model API, you have to click on Olama. Under this Olama only, you can find all the configuration what I have been using. Here in the chat model option, you can see the default, they are going to use the Mistral model. But if you want to use any other model, then you have to overwrite it like what I have passed. If you want the output to be generated in the JSON format, then we have to pass this particular property. And on top of that, there are a few additional parameters as well, which you can play around with based on your requirement. Now, so with this in mind, we are just going to, you know, test it out few things. So I will go to my AI service and the first thing what we are going to do is auto wired this Olama chat model. So as soon as the Olama dependency has been added into prop into your palm file, you will be having access to Olama chat model. And this Olama chat model is going to come from this Spring AI Olama only. One more thing what you can do, like you do not have to specifically pass the Olama chat model. If you want, you can just comment it out. You want to make anything very generic, then you can just call chat model and you can also pass the chat model and this would also work. So considering our demo is around Olama only. So I would remove this and we'll go ahead with our Olama chat model only. First use case, what I'm trying to test it out is generating a response in the JSON format. And for that only we have just passed this property format.json and our prompt is going to be same like what we have been passing to interact with OpenAI models. And after that, actually we are just using our prompt template as we have been using in our earlier videos as well. So we are just passing the category and year because these are the inputs in this particular prompt. So we are just binding it using this prompt template and getting the result out of it. We can just test it out uh, this particular functionality. So for that we have created a controller. So controller is going to be rest controller. In this particular controller we are just auto wiring the AI service and after that we have to pass the category and year. So these are coming as a request parameter and we are just passing our method which we have discovered in AI service. So let me just try to run this. So our code is up and running. So I can just go to AI chat endpoint and I have to pass a category and year as an input. I should be getting a response then. So I will just select a post endpoint over here in postman and I will just select this AI chat. I will pass it and then here we do have category and then year. So I will just select my nine and here probably 2008 and I will just try to run this now. You can see we have finally got the output. I can just go ahead and select the JSON so that you can see it clearly. So we have got the category book here review author summary and it's coming in the proper format also in the JSON as required. But one thing what I wanted to highlight and as I have told earlier also because all these models are running on our local machine. So it may take a lot of time to generate the output. So in this case only like when we were running the same code with the open AI configuration, the response time was very less. But here you can see just to generate this kind of response, it took around one minute, 36 seconds. So it's a lot, but at the same same time, we are also getting a capability to run the models on our local. So it's a kind of trade off that we have to deal with. Now we will again go to our AI service and the second use case what we have as we have seen in the documentation, it can help us in the long form text summarization. The second method what we have written over here where we are going to pass a specific text and after that I have just passed a prompt over here where it's saying you will be given an article. You need to summarize it and provide the output in the JSON format with these keys, topic and highlight. 
right so because again we are passing this input so we have to bind up and for that we are using the prompt template this method is going to be same as we have covered earlier then we are calling our chat model and you know getting the response in the text format because we are navigating till get content method so just to test it out we need some long form of text and we also know the context capability has been increased for all these models so we can pass a lot of context in one shot so just to test it out so i can go to wikipedia and look for any kind of article from here and i can just copy paste it so i will just take all this from here this is related to house of the dragon article and in the controller sections you can see just to interact with this we have created this particular endpoint and here earlier actually we are passing the request parameter but now we are going to pass a request body and under request body we are going to pass a string so just to test it out i am going to go over here i will just select body i will just select raw and from here i will select text and i can pass all this text over here in the raw format from the params i can just remove this and instead of chat i can just call for ask now i will just try to run this we have got the output over here we have got the topic house of dragon tv series and we can also see the highlights from this big article it has worked correctly but you also need to see how much time it took so it took around like 4 minutes and 56 seconds to generate this kind of output. Definitely its reasoning capability is high like it's able to understand our input and provide the output accordingly. But because it's running on our local machine so yeah, it may take some time to generate the output. One more capability what we wanted to test over here because it was not mentioned in the document passing this kind of image and just to see whether we are able to get a response on top of it or not. We have already tested OpenAI GPT 40 model in one of our earlier because you GPT-4 model has the multimodal capabilities and we don't see anything about the multimodal capabilities in Lama 3.1 documentation. So I will just try to pass this particular image and just see like whether Lama 3.1 supports the multimodal capabilities or not. So here I have used this code and in this code you can see we cannot pass the image directly and we have already went over this kind of code earlier. I will just put a link in the description so that you can also refer the code and the output what we were getting using the OpenAI model. First of all we have to convert our image into bytes because this particular image is in our resources so we can access it using this cloth path resource and then we can provide our image name because we have to convert this image into byte so we are using this get content as byte array in this case also we cannot just pass our image directly we have to use the media object over here and this is as per the documentation if you see this multimodal thing here are the sample code and here you can see you know we have to pass our instruction user message so we are just passing like explain what do you see in this picture and then we have to pass byte array of this image under the media object and based on our file type we can just pass this instruction whether this a png image jpj image or what kind of image we are dealing with so same thing i can just show you over here so if i just go to this media type utils then you can see like it supports a lot of types so here we have the jpeg png and gif all those things it supports because our image is in the dot png format so we are just going to pass it as a image underscore png and then we can pass our images the rest of the things are going to be same because we are going to interact with this particular image we are going to ask some questions on top of this we are using olama chat model and ultimately we are expected to get a response out of it because we are passing our instruction under a user message so we have to convert it into a prompt and that we can do it using this new prompt and under this we can just pass the user message we have created another endpoint over here which is going to be image chat and let's go and just try to run this so this endpoint is going to be get endpoint i have to convert the endpoint accordingly so i do not have to pass any key and here i can just pass image or chat and i can just try to run this now if lama 3.1 models has the multimodal capabilities then we should be getting a response and if it doesn't have the multimodal capabilities then we are not going to get anything so we'll wait for the response now in this case we were not able to get a response because llama 3.1 as of now doesn't have the multimodal capabilities so what are our options if you want to interact with images with the open source models so we can uh, go to the documentation over here and here it's saying like presently the lava and baklava olama models offer multimodal support instead of using llama 3.1 i can use like any of the models from here and then i would be able to get the multimodal capabilities via open source model 
library just to check for the model i am again going to go to olama library and here i can just search for lava these models what i see over here this also comes with the different variant and it does have the vision capabilities as well so all this model that you see over here if you want to test it out we do have the smaller model as well with lava phi 3 and this is only like 3 billion parameters but it also has the vision capability so that's how you can just check it out like which particular model has the vision capabilities that we can use it in our application so again i can just click on this and see like what command do i have to run so it's saying like if i have to run the 7b 7b is the smallest one with the 4.7 gb size so i can just take this and i can just copy it over here i can again go to my command prompt and i can just try to paste it llama run lava and then again it will try to and again it will try to download it this particular model and put it on my system i had already downloaded it so again i just got this prompt send a message so now what i need to do i just need to go to my application go to application or properties and here instead of calling llama 3.1 i just have to update to lava because it has been installed on my local and i can just restart my application yeah so my application is up and running i can again go to the same endpoint we don't have to make any changes anywhere and i can just go ahead and try to run this and because this time we do have a model which has the vision capability so i should be getting a response okay so we have finally got the output over here and you can see like it has correctly described what we are seeing in this image so as we can see in this image a man is sitting on the boat playing guitar and if we see in the description we can see the captures a serene moment of person enjoying the tranquility of nature the individual is sitting on a boat strumming a guitar and appears to be singing or playing music it has correctly described it but we have to use some other model to get the response out of this image that's how actually we can play around with all open source model and we can see like which particular model is going to be benefiting which particular scenario so that's how we can integrate open source model with spring ai that's all what we have in this video thank you for watching